Well, hello everyone. This is Wes Henson, and welcome to this week's On the Go podcast. On this podcast, we review and summarize the Bible Studies for Life series weekly lesson. So please take a few moments, if you would, and look in the show notes and the description for links to a two-page printed summary and also a handout. And I want to thank you for joining me today for this week's small group Bible study for the week of March the 31st, 2024. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, I certainly would appreciate it if you would press the like button. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to this channel, and I thank you for that. For a deeper discussion of this week's study, I invite you to the campus of the Ridge Church, and they're located at 7350 Old Highway 13 in Carbondale, Illinois. They meet for small group Bible study on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Okay, let's begin this week's on-the-go Bible study. Now, Sunday is, as you know, is Easter Sunday, and lots of churches have a lot of things going on. Sunday, uh, Sunday morning sunrise worship, they're providing breakfast, there are special events, cantatas, uh, Easter egg hunts, all sorts of things that are going on this Sunday morning. And I'm not sure how much time will be allotted for your Bible study, but however much time that you do have, Please make the most of it, and at the very least, uh, be sure to read all of the scripture passages, and if you would, uh, go over the resurrection handout, which is available in the show notes. There's a link to that, uh, and uh, print that out, and, and, and at least, at the very least, read the scriptures and go uh, over that uh, resurrection handout, why the resurrection is important. Okay, so last week we focused on the death of Jesus. Uh, Jesus died to pay the debt for our sins. But that was only, I don't know how to say this, maybe half of what Jesus came to do. Uh, This week we look at his resurrection from the grave. For without the resurrection, all is lost. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, that if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain. And your faith also is in vain, and we are still in our sins. But such is not the case, as we shall see. The point of this week's study is that Jesus rose again to give us victory over death. And we're going to be in Luke chapter 24 this week. We were, we've were we been looking in Luke 22 and Luke 23, and we're in Luke 24 this week. And I want to begin by reading uh, verses 1 through the first part of verse 6. Follow along, please. Uh, And by the way, I am reading from the um, Christian Standard Bible. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices that they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in, but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them, in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified and bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? asked the men. He is not here, but he is risen. Now, according to our Jewish time, the week begins on what we call Sunday, the first day of the week. And the Jewish daytime hours began at 6 a.m. So more than likely, these women were anxious to complete their task. If you remember when Jesus was crucified and put into the tomb, uh, there was not much time to properly prepare his body because it was getting close to sundown and the Sabbath, and it was a high Sabbath, the Passover Sabbath. So very early on the first day of the week, the women are up, and they are very anxious to complete the task of anointing Jesus' body. So they arrived very early in the morning, uh, Sunday morning, and near dawn, the time of dawn. Now, the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus is the reason why most Christian churches worship on Sunday rather than on the Sabbath. Soon after Jesus' resurrection, the early church began to worship on that Sunday rather than on the Sabbath. And we Read about that. Let me give you quickly some uh, scripture 
references Acts chapter 20 verse 7 uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 2 uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 10 okay you can look those up so these women had had, this, had witnessed the death of Jesus and when they arrived with their spices they find that the tomb was open it was empty and they just stood there trying to process what had happened and then all of a sudden two men appear and the women, it says here, bow down in fright. And the men, uh, who are later identified as angels, uh, explained it this way. They say, he is not here, um, but he has risen. And the fact that Jesus was alive changed everything. And the resurrection of Jesus changes everything for us today. And we oftentimes fail to live in the light of that reality that Jesus is is alive. And when we forget that Jesus is alive, that he is risen, uh, we tend to live for the moment. We operate exclusively in the realm of the now. And we miss the value of seeing the big picture. Uh, look at your life now. But Jesus is alive. Jesus has risen from the dead. And that changes everything. Secondly, we, we cease to rest. When we forget about the fact that Jesus is alive, we drift toward living in a sense of desperation. Uh, we also cease to find any kind of real rest. Uh, things go on and, and we have schedules and things that we have to do. But remember this, Jesus is alive. He is risen. He has overcome the circumstances of our life. And then thirdly, when we forget that Jesus is alive, we oftentimes feel forgotten, like God doesn't care about us or God has forgotten us. But Jesus is alive, and Jesus was raised from the dead so that our sins could be forgiven. And the death of Jesus was real, but it is not the end of the gospel account. Jesus is not found among the dead things of the ancient past. There is no tomb that contains the body of Jesus. He is alive, ever-present, even today. Jesus has risen from the dead. Okay, the empty tomb points to the resurrection of Jesus. We've just looked at that. But in these next verses, we're going to see that Jesus foretold his resurrection. Uh, let me continue on in the last part of verse 6 through verse 8. Remember, the angel is speaking, the two men are speaking, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying that it is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Now, how could these women, these women have forgotten such an important piece of information, Right? But all the disciples appear to have forgotten or failed to understand the prophecy that Jesus made about his resurrection until after the prophecy became true. They all forgot. They all did, didn't remember. Bible prophecy often works this way. Jesus told them in advance, in advance so that they would be encouraged when they remembered his prediction. So here they are, and Jesus is alive. They forgot about it. But then they remembered, and all of a sudden, it all makes sense. Uh, uh, the prophecy was less about helping the disciples know what was going to happen. And it was more about confirming God's hand at work after the events unfolded. By remembering Jesus' words about his death and resurrection, his followers were reassured of the truthfulness of all of his words. The Lord's word is given to us to teach and prepare us for, life, for what lies ahead. Uh, recalling the words of Jesus can bring peace and hope during troubled times, as it must have done for these women. And even in what appears to be the worst of circumstances, God is still in control, and he will accomplish his redemptive plan and fulfill his holy purpose. Now, there is a handout. Again, it's in the, um, in the notes. There's a link. It's titled, The Importance of Christ's Resurrection. I invite you to take a look at that because it speaks about why 
the physical resurrection of Jesus is so important. This is a good time to study that in your classes. Okay, not only did Jesus predict his death and resurrection beforehand, he also provided proof that it really actually happened. Let's move on down to verses 38 through 43. Jesus is uh, speaking to the disciples and he says, why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see that I have. And having said this, Jesus, having said this, he showed them his hands and feet. But while they were still amazed and in disbelief because of their joy, that's a, a whole a uh, bunch of different emotions, right? They're amazed, they're disbelieving, and they are joyful. Uh, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? And so they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. In other words, he's giving them one more facet of evidence that he is there in a physical bodily form. What a day it had been for the disciples. It was an exhausting roller coaster day of emotion for all of them. First, there was the shock of seeing Jesus crucified on the cross. And then they began to hear the rumors uh, about the resurrection from the women uh, and even some of the disciples themselves. And now uh, the disciples are together again in a room locked with locked doors, and they are there filled with all of their doubts and their fears and and even their their shame and their guilt for abandoning Jesus in his time of need. But then, there he was, Jesus. He just appears before them, comes through the locked doors, stands in their midst, and proclaims a message of what? Peace. Uh, not fear. Don't be afraid, but a message of peace. Don't be anxious, but be at peace. Uh, don't feel guilty, but be at peace. And this is good news for us, particularly if we find ourselves at times doubting the resurrection of Jesus. Is he really alive? Did he really rise from the dead? And it's good news for us, what we see here, for two reasons. Number one, uh, we see that Jesus' resurrection is verified. It seems that with every passing hour on that first Easter morning, the number of people who saw Jesus alive grows, gets larger and larger and larger. And then secondly, we see here, particularly in this passage, that Jesus welcomes the doubter. Notice the way that he responded to those who doubted. Notice he says, you know, peace, be still. He, come here, let me show you. I'm examine me. Uh, I'm even going to eat something uh, to reinforce to them that he really is alive. And he welcomes those who doubt to come and verify the truth for themselves. Jesus comes to reveal himself to us and to bring peace to our troubled lives. Even though we may have struggles of faith, the Lord continues to offer himself to us and he challenges us to test that he is who he says he is, and he is capable of doing what he says he will do. So he challenges us, put him to the test, so that we might know for sure. The resurrection of Jesus is not a fable, it's not a shadowy spiritual phenomenon, uh, but it's real. And because of that, uh, and because of our experiences with the living Lord, it prepares us as it prepared the disciples in that day to share the truth of Jesus with those around us. Okay, that's our lesson for this week. But before we go, we want to quickly uh, find some application. What do we do? What do we learn? What can we uh, apply to our lives this week? Because we've studied this passage of Scripture. So let me mention three applications. Number one, in your grief, go to Jesus. It's okay to be saddened by death and by suffering. At the tomb of his friend Lazarus, you remember that, Jesus wept 
because of death, even though he knew he would be able to defeat it. So tell Jesus about your sadness. It's okay to grieve over loss uh, and, and suffering that's going on in your midst and in your life. Secondly, <clears throat> take your doubts to Jesus. Jesus wants to help you to overcome your doubts and your disbelief. Write them down and, and pray about them because just know this, Jesus wants to give you peace. And then third application is take your joy to Jesus. Jesus' resurrection guarantees our future. He, it guarantees our resurrection. So spend some time this week praising the Lord for the good things of the physical world and the guarantee of the future that we have with the Lord. Okay, let's wrap things up for this week, this Easter Sunday week. Remember this, Jesus never failed, even when it came to his most seemingly impossible prediction, his own resurrection. It's true and it's real. Okay, remember to check out all the links for this week's study. And then I, I invite you to join the discussion on the Ridge Church campus this Sunday morning at 9 a.m. at the Ridge Church. All right, folks, bye for now.